Let's begin by traveling back to the 1960s, when Joseph Zimbal, a computer scientist at MIT, introduced ELIZA, a program designed to simulate conversation. A variation called Doctor was created to respond to patients like a therapist by looking at the user input and applying a set of rules to generate a plausible response. But of course, this was all an illusion, as it could not converse with true understanding. That's right. In fact, it had been created to demonstrate how superficial human-computer interactions were at the time. But to Wizenbaum's surprise, many people found it useful and engaging. Some even envisioned its revolutionizing therapy, marking the first generation of chatbots for this purpose. Fast forward to the COVID outbreak, mental health struggles became a pervasive issue. In China, more than one third of people reported experiencing anxiety and depression, and searches for mental health counseling also surged on Baidu. This is a this is a challenge that runs deeper than the, uh, the recent crisis, as the decline in our collective well-being has started away before its whole COVID saga. Take a place like Shanghai. For example, since 2009, the suicide rate has been, in, uh, has been climbed steadily. Our country's youth, dealing with intense academic pressure, have also been wrestling with depression and anxiety for decades. And as China's population ages, more senior citizens are dealing with loneliness as their children move away to big cities to build their futures. Mental health struggles are something we are all susceptible to, and the pandemic has only brought it to the forefront. But even as awareness grows, resources remain a challenge. It is estimated that one in five people have mental illness at any given time, yet only 25% of those people are receiving any form of care. That is a serious concern. But now, the rise of AI is changing so many aspects for our lives. We encounter daily, from facial recognition on our phone, to Alexa and Siri. This begs a question. How can AI be implemented in the field of therapy? Can artificial mind truly heal real ones? And what are the gains and pitfalls in letting them try? These are the questions we will explore further in this talk. So, let's delve right in and explore the ways in which AI is improving the landscape of therapy, beginning with the all-important factor of accessibility. Picture this. In China, there are only nine mental health workers for every 100,000 people. It's a significant gap to fill. But here's where AI comes in. Therapy apps are addressing this issue by providing accessible and affordable mental health services. Take Robot, for instance. It's like having a pocket therapy app that provides, quote, evidence-based mental health services that get people off a wait list and onto a path of feeling better. Absolutely. And apart from this, AI is also helping with quality control. Even though therapy has been around, around for a while, there's still a lot we don't understand. It's been virtually impossible to fully quantify what works and why. Until now, AI with its rapid language analysis capabilities is changing the game. AI is digging into the language using its therapy sessions on a quest to identify those magic words that truly makes a difference. The result will be that more people get better and stay better. Indeed, and this goes even deeper. AI can help identify mental illness earlier by actively reaching out to those at risk. The ReachVet program utilizes an algorithm to identify veterans at risk for suicide to offer them mental health support. And then there's Ellie, the virtual interviewer. She may not be real, but she's here to talk to you and analyze your expressions and voice for signs of PTSD and depression is a promising and exciting frontier in mental health. With AI, we're not just improving access to therapy, but also making it more effective, efficient, and proactive. That's right. And speaking of proactiveness, I heard that Erin has conducted her own project on the topic. Would you like to share more about it? Yes, of course. 
Um, our journey began with a group of like-minded friends, and we come together, we choose digital therapeutics as our topic. We aim to increase social awareness and understanding of digital therapeutics as a reliable treatment for depression through our project. That sounds really fascinating. Could you tell us more about how you planned and conducted this project? Certainly. As thought, we dove deep into the understanding of depression itself and how it affects people. I made a detailed plan, we laid our goals, timelines, and what step to take next. We, I, and we start to write articles for our own official account for promoting relevant inform, information to people. Then in July, we sat down with patients who had tried digital therapeutics tools with chatbot support. The experience gave us a better understanding beyond what we see in advertisement. Interestingly, we received a range of positive response. It's truly in intriguing to see how these tools are making a difference in patients' lives. On the flip side, were there any particular challenges or concerns that arose regarding the use of digital therapeutics? There are several challenges and concerns we've encountered. I can still remember that some patients expressed their concerns about whether these tools could offer the same level of care and empathy as a human therapist. However, as they continue to use the software and experience its benefits, many of these concerns start to fade away. Actually, when a new concept comes into vision, undeniably there will be concerns. I firmly believe that digital therapeutic is not for average users only. The scheme behind it should adapt smoothly to everyone, or at least try to. Thank you for sharing your project insights. It really provides valuable perspectives from the patients themselves that engage with these AI-based therapies. From what we've looked at, it's evident that AI holds great promise for therapy. However, it's also essential to pause and consider the issues that it brings about. Absolutely. We mustn't let the excitement blind us to the potential pitfalls. First up, privacy and data security are a concern. When we share personal information online, we are setting into in the realm of risk. When we, the truth is, not all healthcare apps have the safeguards we need. And there's a pressing issue of crisis management. AI therapy might excel in routine interactions, but when it comes to emergencies, it can leave a significant gap in care during the, those critical movements. For example, when, when somebody attempts to commit suicide, and how AI chatbots go to detect the risk and effectively report to, to what people who have respect to it. Due to the, due to the limitations of empathy possessed by the AIs, and how can they understand, truly and truly understand, human feelings? Another concern revolves around algorithms. Imagine this, an algorithm designed to identify health needs for more than 100 million people. In the quest to predict illness likelihood, the algorithm relies on a simple premise. On a simple premise, individuals typically use more healthcare resources. However, this approach significantly underestimated illness among black patients compared to white patients. Why? Because it did not account for the fact that black patients typically spend less on healthcare. As a result, they had to be much sicker to be recommended for extra care under the algorithm. This is what we call algorithmic bias where algorithms, if not designed with inclusivity and diversity, can magnify existing inequalities based on factors like gender, race, disability, and so on. And of course, there are also the pressing question of whether AI can genuinely simulate meaningful interactions. After all, mental health treatment requires the human touch, quality like empathy, judgment, emotional intelligence, and so on which AI can mimic, but not truly possess. Indeed, and this became alarmingly evident 
when a chatbot recommended weight loss tips to individuals with eating disorders. The nuances of human therapists aren't easy to replicate. It's also worth mentioning that the very creative of Eliza, Wazimbo, became an outspoken critic of AI. He believed that no computer could ever fully understand a human being. But irony of ironies, users became so emotionally attached to, with, to that they forgot they were conversing with a computer, demonstrating how easily people could be tricked into thinking a computer could truly understood them. This blurs the line between human and machine. Wazimbong foresaw the dangers in this phenomenon, warning it could lead to undue trust in computers' judgment. Unfortunately, some of his concerns have materialized. For instance, a Bowden father of two ended his life after interaction with an AI. And notably, this AI was none other than Eliza. The chatbot encouraged him to put an end to his life after he proposed sacrificing himself to save the planet, a grim manifestation of wisdom bombs fears. So, what is the solution? AI has brought tremendous advancement in mental health, no doubt. But we should avoid burdening computers with tasks beyond their capacity. We should never, quote, substitute a computer system for a human function that involves interpersonal respect, understanding, and love. As such, the ultimate answer lies in a harmonious balance where AI complements human treatment, creating a comprehensive approach to mental well-being. It's not about substitution, but rather augmentation and enhancement, ensuring that everyone, without exception, receives the top-tier care that they deserve. Thank you. Thank you.